Hey everyone, welcome to this edition of the Happy Healthy Half Hour. My name is Lindsay Bonadonna. I am a life and health coach, optimist, encourager, yoga teacher, and I am so excited to welcome Beth from Enya Blooms today. Beth, hello friend, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Should we apologize for my nasal congestion? Hopefully it doesn't sound too terrible. <laughs> Yes, we were just talking about like, I had a sinus infection a couple months ago. It is like that time of the year. And depending on when you're watching this right now, it is April in Cincinnati, Ohio. And our weather goes from like 70 degrees to 22 degrees all over. So we're all just kind of a hot mess here. (laughs) Yes, it's crazy. (laughs) So I want to share a little bit. Um, first. So Beth and I met through a really amazing community that we have here in Cincinnati, as well as it's located in other cities as well called the Beauty Boost. And I've been very attracted to Beth and her work with the Enneagram through what she posts on Instagram. And eventually I got curious enough and booked a session and y'all, it like blew my mind because as much as I've been into personal growth and like all these different personality things and insights. I never did the Enneagram until two months ago. And it was so amazing that I booked another session. So I needed to have Beth on to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So Beth, can you first share just a little bit about yourself, your background and how you got into the Enneagram and why you felt so called to work deeper within the space with people? Sure. So I'm actually an occupational therapist by trade. So I was just explaining to someone the other day that someone asked if I wanted to do OT or be an Enneagram coach. And I said, I don't want to, and I don't have to decide because I love doing both of those things. So I was a pediatric OT at children's for almost 10 years. And during that time I started studying the Enneagram and I was noticing how much it was helping me in my leadership position and in interacting with coworkers, kind of seeing how we approach the same problem from a totally different lens and that one of us wasn't right or wrong. We just saw the world differently. And so as that started to open my eyes, I did more self-study to figure out my own type and that sort of thing. And then when COVID hit, uh, I ended up About five months in, I left children's to homeschool my kids. And while I was home, so a little background, I'm a learner, I'm a grower. I like have to be, I'm always constantly reading and learning something new. And so I saw, (laughs) I know it's like a good, a good and a bad problem to have. Um, My stack of books is always growing. Um, so I noticed that because of COVID, a lot of the Enneagram training programs I had wanted to do and wasn't able to do because I was working full-time at children's had gone virtual. And so I was able to get continuing education credits for leadership through OT to become a certified Enneagram teacher. And I just had so much fun during the cohort and meeting new people and all of that, that I decided, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Like anytime I talked to someone about it, I felt myself lighting up inside. I felt people start to get excited about what it might look like to get to know themselves better. And so here we are. So last summer I started very slowly as my kids transitioned back to school away from homeschool, launching a website and launching my Enneagram um, page on Instagram. And I just love teaching and talking to awesome people like you um, who are willing to kind of explore themselves deeply and learn and grow. So that's where we are. That's how we got here today. (laughs) It's so, it's so amazing hearing that story on so many different levels, right? Because just also from the aspect that you said that you don't have to choose, because I think a lot of times we put ourselves in positions where we feel it's like, well, I can only do one thing, you know? And I love Mm -hmm. too, how you spoke about, you just noticed that feeling in your heart when you would talk about the Enneagram and, and all of that. Something that really struck me, one of the first times that we talked more about this is your approach, because I went into it thinking, because people kept on asking me when I would tell it, when I was telling them that I was going through this process, they're like, oh, well, what number are you? And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to be a number. And then I can tell you what number I am. And then you're going to understand me better. 
And I would love for you to talk more about your approach because it kind of blew my mind. And what we're working on together is kind of understanding, like I, I feel like we're kind of in this space where it's like, Ooh, like maybe two ish, maybe seven ish. And then like, just through talking and coaching, like kind of, kind of learning, helping me learn more about myself. But I thought that was kind of a really different approach to this process and not looking at it as like, you take this test, here are your results, here's your number, here's how you like work better in the world and with others. Um, so talk, talk about that, because I won't do it. Yeah. Now. <laughs> so no, so, you know, I think part of that comes from the Enneagram in general, as an Enneagram teacher or coach, uh, we are taught to say, it is not my job to put you in a box. Um, it's very different than other personality tests in terms of are, are you, most people can answer, like, are you an introvert or an extrovert? And yes, it's nice to know your number because it's a good place to start, but mm -hmm. so many people, and this is what really drove me to wanting to do the education piece is so many people do this whole, like what Disney princess matches your Enneagram number. And I just think that, okay, it's fun and it's silly, but like it loses so much value because this system to me has so much depth. It tells you so much about who you are, what happens when you're in a crappy place and what can happen when you're growing and what potential you have. And so I find that taking a test is a really helpful beginning place because it starts to give you some of those aha moments. I never want the test to be, you know, oh, I'm a two, so I'm this. Um, mm -hmm. I read just before signing on today, I was reading um, one of my favorite Enneagram authors is Ian Cron. He has a, a podcast called Typology that's really good. And I wrote this down. He said, no amount of Enneagram information can transform you unless you're rig rigorously honest with yourself about who you are. And oh, goosebumps. I know. <laughs> and so I just think that like, the Enneagram isn't just this, like I plug in some answers and I get a response and then I move along with my day. It's this constant encountering yourself. And Lindsay, when we met, we talked about having that veil of like kind of your old self. <laughs> um, and those, the veil can kind of be those stories that we tell ourselves or the beliefs that we've learned over time that keep us safe or that help us to feel loved that maybe as grownups, I say grownups all the time because I'm a pediatric therapist. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I love it. Maybe as grownups there, those stories aren't serving us anymore. So getting to that place of like true belonging of what's underneath and that's where your number is. That's where your core is, but it also doesn't have to define you. So I love the exploration. That's why I call my first session a discovery session because okay. it's not a like oh, we're going to find an answer. And then that's the end of it session. It's like the beginning of discovering. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. And that's exactly what I experienced. Like, and I can't tell you how helpful and transformative that session was for me and just how you guys, like as a coach, you come to really appreciate and, and long for people asking you questions about yourself. <laughs> I don't know. Because yes. <laughs> yes. I love, I'm a curious person. So I love asking people and learning about people and all that. But when you get to meet with somebody that is skilled and asking questions to like bring out your soul, it is just like, oh my gosh, it's like a wonderful spa bath, but also like <laughs> challenging and and insightful and all these things. And Beth, you are so <laughs> flipping gifted at it, like just so flipping gifted. And a question I have too, because there are many people that aren't super familiar with the Enneagram. This isn't like a new trend phase thing. Like I feel like more and more people are talking about it, but can you share a little bit about like where this all started? Because this kind of blew my mind as well. Yeah, it has it has a long history and it didn't come from just one place really. And it, what I love about it is it, it's this world tradition of different people recognizing that they're as humans, there are kind of these nine types that we represent and how crazy it is. And of course there's variation with it in each type that as a one, other people who are ones 
also tend to take on traits that are seven like when they're growing and traits of that are four like when they're stressed out and that that not that it's an ultimate truth but it that it can lead us towards growth in a way that's close enough to truth that it that it fits it's and it's not you know and nothing is one size fits all but it's just cool to see and so it was kind of this secret club thing back in the day and it came from a couple different places and then when it came to the US and um some of the originators started to teach their students and they said, don't tell other, don't tell the others, you know, it was almost like, uh, um, this is like privileged knowledge that we have. Yeah. And then someone decided to write a book. And then of course it caught fire because people noticed how much truth there was in it and how helpful it was as a system. And then it kind of grew from there. And that teacher taught a few students who taught a few students. And now there are all kinds of coaches, coaching programs, and there's an international Enneagram association. There's all of these things that are dedicated to helping people learn and grow in this way. So it's pretty crazy. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. And when did it, cause I can't remember, like, when did it first come over to the United States ish? Oh, was it in like now you're going to stump me because I'm going to need to like pull out my, I get so into the nitty gritty of like the growth part Yeah, that history was never my best subject. So like I could give you. Mine neither. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. Is I'm it like, like 1900s? Yeah. 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 Like, I, I mean, I can look and tell you, I can, I can textbook tell you, but I can't tell you off the top of my head because I will say like, as a teacher, I am a, uh, I'm definitely, definitely a, like how we can apply this to our lives than yes, like a, me memor a memorize, than a memorizing facts kind of teacher. So yes, happy I'm to look at way. You, if you want me to. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think what's really interesting about it too. And, and something that we talked about previously is just this idea. Let's see if I can put this in a way that makes sense. What blows my mind is as I went through my yoga teacher training and learned just about more of the, the history and philosophy around yoga, that's a thousands of years old practice. And I think about the coaching programs that I've been through, the books that I've read, like different, like what I've learned from you about the Enneagram and just some deeper dives that I've went in. I look at like different and by no means am I, am I an expert, right? I'm just picking up information from kind of all over, but like looking at different religious traditions and things like that, there is such a strong thread of this idea of truly getting to know your deepest self, but yet it's something that we in the United States at this juncture in time do not take the time to do. And then we expect like, and this is something that's been coming across my radar a lot lately, um, you know, with myself clients, I, I don't know, I feel like things go in seasons and we're all kind mm -hmm. of like experiencing this, but, you know, we tend to so quickly look outward at like, well, this person is doing this and I feel frustrated by it. And like, all of these things are happening external and we're very focused on how we feel about that instead of being like, well, how is this an opportunity why is this bothering me? Like, why am I frustrated by this? And like, that's what I think is so powerful because in what you've shared with me so far as we've been going through our, our sessions is just reading. And I'm like, my gosh. So that's an insight as to why I potentially feel that way. And it can help inform our relationships in such a powerful way. And when I say relationships, I just mean with any human, right? And I also think like our collective humanness in general, um, in a way that I think is necessary and needed, like to the point where with my clients, what's been surprising to me, because I do the, the life and the health stuff is that people will come to me for health stuff and that's easy change, you know, eat more fresh foods and processed foods. Yeah. Cool. No problem. Oh yeah. I'm walking a few right. times a week. Great. This is all great, but it's the life stuff and the introspection 
where all of that change really takes hold and is so important. Um, Beth, tell me about, in your experiences with working with clients, what are some different maybe aha moments that you've had, you're, you've seen your clients experience or that you've experienced as a coach kind of learning? Because that's a cool thing too when you're a coach, you get to learn about oh, for sure. yourself yeah. and grow so much. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, tell me about some aha moments kind of on both sides, things that have surprised you or things that you have found surprising um, that your clients have shared. Well, what's funny is what you were just saying about how those health changes are quicker. I was just talking to a woman yesterday and we were talking about how the brain is capable of making those new paths, right? Mm -hmm. But when we think about those old stories that we learned to tell, which the mm -hmm. first step in the Enneagram journey is to recognize those old stories, those those are like, like if you're going hiking and you're wanting like the easy path, those are the easy path, right? So that same story that you've always told or that same reaction that you always have to that certain person in your life, whatever it is, um, the way you react to people in traffic, those mm. are your paths that are easy to go down. When you're in a place where you're ready to start making new paths, you know, our, our psychology and our studies tell us that you can make those new paths, but think about like, if you're making a new hiking trail, like you have to clear the path. And so if you've yeah. got point A and point B, like the first time you try to take that path, like it's going to be really hard because you're, you're working against everything you know to be true of the last 20 years or 30 years or 40 years of the way you usually approach this problem. So you're going to have to come up with new creative solutions, but over time you realize, oh, I might need different tools to clear this brush away, or I might need a different community, or I might need to connect in a different way to clear this new path. And then it gets easier, right? And so that has been a huge aha for me because so many people are stuck in their story. Mm -hmm. uh, and our story often is what our, our ego developed to keep yes. us safe over time. So we were these safe, happy little kids. A lot of people were, not everyone had, you know, but at some point, some way too young, had to develop stories that kept them safe uh, mm -hmm. or helped them to feel loved or accepted or whatever that was. And the, the aha is realizing when you don't need that story anymore. Another, <laughs> another aha, and I think this is the hardest for all of my clients, is when you want to grow, but the people around you aren't. And so, oh, yes. I'm probably yes. preaching to the choir. <laughs> it's so it's hard. Go on. Really go on. hard. No. So, but you said this right when you started talking before you asked me this question. And that is recognizing that when I want you to grow, I'm in your business and I'm arguing. Kate, Byron Katie um, talks is an author who talks a lot about how much we, how often we argue with what is. And so if I say, I really wish Lindsay would stop X, Y, Z, I'm arguing, well, first of all, I'm in your business. That's not my business. And my choice is to continue to argue with what is, which is that Lindsay does X, Y, Z, or I can change my response. Um, and that's hard if you're around, harder, I should say, when you're around people who aren't healthy, yeah. potentially, but often what bothers us is a clue to what our own kind of vice or passion is. Like what makes me angry tells me a lot about, a lot about me. And yeah. it's an opportunity um, to flip that. So, you know, working with someone who said to me, um, I just don't feel like anything I do matters. Like, I don't yeah. feel like it has, it, it has worth or it 
or it, it makes a difference to my husband or to my kids. And mm. when we got to the root of it, she believed that she, I, we actually realized that she doesn't think she matters. So it's really hard to believe that someone else does. Same with the client I worked with yesterday. We realized that she's having a really hard time taking compliments in her business. And she's amazing at what she does. And she said she got super uncomfortable when another business owner complimented her the other day. And she realized yesterday she can't take compliments from herself. She doesn't speak kindly to herself. So then it's really hard to really to receive that from other people. So those are, I would say, like the biggest ahas. <laughs> it's <That's>, good stuff. <laughs> dude, it is such good stuff, but it is so hard. And it's hard to, um, you know, it is interesting because I, I talk about it in terms of like vibrational frequencies. I don't know a, a different way to put it yet, but this is how I look at it. I feel like when you make a choice to start doing the work and get curious about yourself, why you're doing things like just all of that kind of stuff. And you start to grow on that path. You start to vibrate at a higher frequency <coughs> and it is really hard. And I've seen, I actually think I've seen all of my clients and I know I've been there for sure personally where it's like, all of a sudden you start to see this gap of like, you're kind of like yep. <laughs> vibrating up here. And then you start to notice that people around you may be down here. And there is that initially I've noticed that there's that feeling of frustration of asking, well, like what you get concerned about, like what they're doing and why they're not doing it and everything that you are just saying. Right. And then as you continue to grow and ask yourself, well, what what's really going on here, you realize how much of that has to do with yourself and that you can, your only control in the situation that I believe is that continuing to grow yourself and setting that example and encouraging, but you have to first connect. I heard this on a podcast recently. It's freaking blowing my mind. Of course, it's from <laughs> Brene Brown and Glennon Doyle, but they're talking about connection <clears throat> and control, right? So it's like <laughs> pausing and asking yourself, okay, I'm up here. I'm kind of vibrating. I'm, I'm doing my gig. I'm starting to see things differently. I'm, I'm noticing that I might have to trim some branches Sorry. off of my, oh, you're good. You're good. <coughs> off of my friendship tree or noticing that relationships aren't serving you in the same way, but you have to connect with yourself first. And then I've been pausing and asking myself, it's like, okay, in this situation, I, and am I trying to connect with this person or am I trying to control them? is valuable to ask when you're parenting uh -huh. your kids <laughs> mm -hmm. and then yes. when you find that that control is creeping in it always comes back to some narrative that is no that was developed to protect to save to feel loved all of these things it always comes back to that and then being able to break through and change that narrative or let it go in some way shape or form <laughs> I'm passing my cough through the screen. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's, it, it, it's something, um, Beth, I would love to, to see how you feel about this. It's, it's exciting to me when I see somebody growing to that point, but it's also so hard because you know how hard it is to yeah. be in that place. And then also you don't quite know that everything's going to be okay yet. Right. So there's just like a lot there to witness somebody journey through that, but it's also so exciting because you know, like how deeply connected you'll be with yourself and continue to grow and learn over the years. And it never ends, right? No. Like, and that's the good and the bad of it is, you know, um, I think knowing that there's not an end point can be like really cool, but it can also feel exhausting. Um, yeah. I also think based on, so my type, I'm a type one. And so I can really struggle when I can see someone's potential, but they are not interested or willing to yeah. grow and growing, or they don't think they can, they don't believe they can. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I even had a friend from an old job. It was probably six months ago, but she, she texted me and just said, I don't know who I am if I'm not this. And it was mm -hmm. the job title and it like 
it broke my heart because I can see all the things that she could be or do. Um, she is like a powerful, amazing, really talented woman. And so it's hard to see once I think being in a coaching position, you start to see the potential everyone around you has. And when they're not interested in making change, and I don't want to say that in like a self-righteous way, I really wanted to come right. across as like a, in a loving, holy cow, you have so much inside of you that's untapped. Um, it's hard to see that and sit back, you know? Yes. So that can be the good and the bad of it. Um, like waiting and allowing people to decide uh, when it, when they, when they, want, when they want to grow or make that decision. And then when they don't recognizing that it's not, it's not my responsibility. That's yes. hard. Oh man. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that so hard. And it's also so interesting too, because I, to what you're saying, it can feel, I think I, I always used to look at things like well, when this happens, then it will be like relief or like, oh, when I get here, then I won't have to worry about all of this. And I don't, I don't know, some point over the last three years through the various things that I've grown and went through personally, I came to this place where I just kind of realized I was like, oh shit, things don't, I don't have to do everything in one week or two months or three months or a year. Like I've just been trying to like lean back and be like, oh, I have a whole lifetime to figure this out. And I feel like it's helped remove some pressure because I think too, you know, in our, in our current culture, we want quick fixes and we want answers and we want to take the data. We want to do something with it and we want to fix and we want like, but man, there is something very, very powerful when we take a deep breath and step back and just focus on just taking time to get to know ourselves because I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm 41 and I just started getting to know myself like really deeply, like two, three years ago. And really right. this last, even these last three months have been monumental, but it's like, why rush that process? You know, we're, and I know this resonates with you, but it's, <laughs> I yeah. always say it, but it's like, we're the only ones that we spend our whole lives with. So we have our whole life to get to know ourselves and to learn in these different stages. And I just, I simply, simply love your, the way you approach the, the Enneagram and the coaching and the fabulous questions. Oh my gosh, you're like, Beth, when I say, and I do not like say this lightly, it's you have been blessed with the ability to encourage people in such a welcoming, warm, non-threatening, non-scary way to explore themselves and just like to walk that journey with them in a way that it just feels safe and non-judgmental. Like you guys, like seriously, it's, and, so and I'm excited. So kind. <laughs> it's so true. It's how I feel. I love it. But it's so exciting too, because the work that you do like there are clients that come to mind where it's like, you know, it, I feel like this question gets asked a lot too. And there are like, as coaches, we all have different skill sets and specialties. And there is the way that you approach things is so complimentary, but a different type of insight into growth. Like to me, because it takes a whole team, y'all. Yes. Work cannot be done with just one person. Like, I wish that I could say like, oh yeah, just work with me and it will be great. Or just work with Beth and it will be great. But man, I'm talking, I have like flipping therapists. I have Beth. I have myself in my head. I have a chiropractor, <laughs> my massage therapist, energy healer, like doctors, like all of these like different <laughs> people, right? Because books, because at the end of the day, there's so much, there's just so much to learn, but I, there love, is. love, love, love your approach so much. But Beth, so this is crazy. As I mentioned, the half hour goes by really fast. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. It's so funny. A half hour um, playing pretend with my children feels like six hours. A half hour chatting about something I'm passionate about feels like 30 seconds. 
that's how I feel. I, I love and (laughs) appreciate parents that deeply get into like playing dolls and all that kind of, it is just not my jam. I'm like redirecting towards Legos or, or I don't know. Uh-huh. I feel you on that. that. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> oh it's over there. That's funny. That is so, funny. So, Beth, can you share a little bit about the best way to, to contact you, to follow you, to learn more about you? If somebody wants to book a session, and I'll also post this um, in the comments as well, so you guys can easily access it too, if you're interested in reaching out to Beth. But what's the best ways? Sure. So of course I can't make it simple. My website name is super long because you go to do something and like things are taken. So bloom yes. where you're bloom, where you're planted, like the Y O U R E where bloom where you're planted. And then Sensi is on there too, because bloom where you're planted was taken. So bloom where you're planted, Sensi C I N C Y. Um, and that's my website. Any of blooms is E N N E A blooms like Enneagram and blooms. Um, that's on Instagram and bloom with Beth Sensi is my email. So yeah, those are long. So you might need to put them in the notes. No, I love it. I love it. And your, so your email is Beth bloom with Beth Sensi at Gmail at Gmail. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Yes, yes friends. And, you and I love schedule. questions. So I will take them anytime. <laughs> Yes. And just, if you're just kind of like curious, but you're like, I don't know, like her Instagram is so beautifully curated and Mm -hmm. it really is. I mean, it just got me curious and it's, it's beautiful and insightful to read. And also she always shares incredible gold on her stories as well. So my dear friends, I cannot thank you enough for joining us for this happy, healthy half hour. And Beth, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to just share your wisdom and your personality and all of your love uh, with everyone. I deeply appreciate it. And of course, friends, if you have any questions, go ahead, email them, lindsay at lindsaybonadonna.com. Of course, you can reach out to Beth directly and you can check out other happy, healthy half hours at lindsaybonadonna.com backslash blog. But thank you so much. And friends, again, just reminding you, you are the only person that you spend your entire life with. So take time to get to know yourself, be patient, be kind, be loving, and just please know that you are not on this journey alone. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.